Today's episode of the WAC Podcast is brought to you by Hercules Tires, the official tire of the Western Athletic Conference. Now here are your hosts, Eric Danner and Rachel V. Hill. We are now joined by Danny Cross, the Assistant Director of Athletic Communications at California Baptist University. Danny, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for being on the show, Danny. First off, NCAA announced the competition date for basketball November 25th. It's a date that we've circled on our calendars. I'm sure you have as well. Any idea on when CBU might be back on the court uh, for competition? Yeah, I would think um, as, as close to that 25th day as possible. We'll, we're still looking at some contracts for some games. Um, it seems like everyone wants a game, uh, but we can't seem to ever get anything in writing with the state we're in. So I would assume our, our non-conference schedule will look a lot regionally based, um, just kind of staying within the state as, as safety measurements provide. But um, yeah, we're all kind of in a limbo. I would imagine a lot of programs out there are in a limbo right now with what their non-conference slate looks like. What is on campus looking like for the students and student athletes right now? What's the testing protocol? So our, our student athletes get tested um, every day uh, that they're on campus and, and practicing. Um, and so our students are, are being tested when they want to. They can go in and they, we provide testing on campus. Um, but right now our safety measurements are are all in place where six feet uh, masks are required everywhere. Um, instead of like the water fountains you used to see, it's not Corel stations that people can get sanitizer on their hands. Um, everything as far as like our food, there's now like bubbles you have to stand on. It's actually pretty wild um, how, how much of work as CBU and the executive council has like put in to make sure that the safety of our students is in a good spot. Talking with Danny Cross from California Baptist University. And Danny, uh, CBU had quite a first two years in the WAC, maybe surprised some people and have been very competitive right near the top of the conference. Big part of that has been Milan Aqua, who was the WAC player of the year last year. He is not back. There's going to be a lot of new faces at CBU this year. Any idea what that starting five is going to look like uh, when the end of November rolls around? Yeah, that. I think that's a question our coaching staff is still trying to figure out right now. Like you said, we have a lot of new faces and, and with a lot of new faces comes a lot of different positions and, and a lot of different culture building. So I don't, I don't know if we, if we have a starting five right now, I would imagine Ty Rao would be one of them. Uh, but I'm not sure what that looks like as of right now. You mentioned Ty Rao was injured last year. He's coming back this year. What kind of anticipation is it for him to get back out on the court? He has put in a lot of work in his rehab. He is a bigger, stronger, healthier version of himself, which is great. It's a testament to who he is as a character of a person. But um, I think he's going to be one of our leaders from the jump. I mean, I've already seen it in practices and workouts that he has taken on that role, that leader position. Um, and he's a testament to this program. Like he has done everything right from day one. And I think he is going to be one of our big factors going forward for this season. Now there's also a couple of uh, big time uh, transfers coming in and by big time, I mean, big, <laughs> these are a couple of big guys. You have uh, Russell Barlow from TCU and, and correct me on the uh, pronunciation here, Danny, is it Gorjak Gak? Gorjak Gak. Yep. Gorjak Gak from Florida. These are some big dudes. Tell us about these two. They are going to be um, a fan favorite going forward. The duo is explosive in practices. Um, seeing Gorjak in person is, is one of those things that kind of blows you away that a human being can be that big. Um, <laughs> his wingspan, let alone, is insane. Um, I was at practice Friday, and he had a dunk where his entire arm was over the rim. Like, Ooh. it's just – it's incredible to watch him jump. It's incredible to watch him play. Um, I think he's going to be uh, awesome for us. Play by play, we'll definitely love pronouncing that oh, name for sure. Oh, <laughs> Gak. That was the first pronunciation. Get. The nice thing is, is once you hear it, you can kind of see that it makes sense, Gorjak Gak. But, yeah, it's going to be a name a lot of our, our WAC affiliates are going to be familiar with pretty quick. And then Barlow from TCU, another uh, pretty good uh, men's basketball program and for, for him. 
Yeah, Russell is a workhorse. I think that's how I would describe him. He's a guy that loves the gym. Um, I don't want to say he's a gym rack because I think that term is a little outdated now, but he is an absolute workhorse. He will not stop putting the work in. Um, and his, he looks like he's in really, really good shape right now. Eric mentioned Milan Aqua earlier. Who do you see maybe filling in the roles, or do you think it's going to be spread out? So who can get that many points on the board for the Lancers? Yeah, I think our, our first two years, it was a little bit of the Milan Aqua show, rightfully so, um, how, how good he was and how, how of a difference maker he was for our program, especially any time on the court when he had the ball in his hands. You knew good things were going to happen. I think this year might be the first year we see it's going to be a little bit of a, a committee. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of guys averaging around the double figures and a lot of guys getting a lot of minutes. Um, now the question is who's going to have the ball in their hands with those final seconds. And that's something I think we're all looking forward to figuring out who that's going to be. Uh, Rachel mentioned Milan Aqua there and we, uh, Rachel interviewed him a couple of weeks ago as he gets ready for the NBA draft. Uh, that's got to be pretty exciting for the program. Obviously he leaves after his junior year, but he has a chance to, uh, possibly join the NBA or play professional basketball. That has to be pretty good news for the, the CBU program that you can produce players that can go on to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. He, obviously, we would have loved him back. Like, I think <laughs> around here would have loved him back. But when the time is right and he, he felt like the time was right, um, obviously, this is something that you want to see from your program. You want to have players move on to the next level and we've had some that have gone overseas this last season. Omar Lowe is in Spain. Dejan Davis is in Turkey. Um, and so now with Milan, who's, you know, going into the NBA draft, I think we're all kind of pulling for him excited. I know Coach Croy has been getting a lot of phone calls on him. Um, I mean, once you meet Milan and once you see him work out in person, you kind of figure out that he's, he's the real deal. We obviously probably all would have loved to see Milan at WAC Vegas this year, but of course, wishing him the best of luck. But that does mean that the Lancers get to go to WAC Vegas. How excited is the team and the school as a whole to head out to Vegas and hopefully compete in March? I think we're, we're ecstatic, over the roof. I mean, for me personally, I was, I was very excited to, to find out that we'll be able to join this year. I think, I think as programs and coaches build – Throughout their year, they always have dates and stuff they circle, right, to help prepare their guys. And for us, you know, these first two years, we didn't really have a finish line. You know, you're, you're hoping for postseason, and luckily enough, our first year we were able to get a postseason bid and, and host. Um, this last year it was looking it was like going to be the same thing, and then COVID happened. Um, but now we get to add a little uh, tip to our cap with WAC Vegas, and I think, I think that's going to be something that's going to be <laughs> circled on our calendar, and we're looking forward to being able to get down there and play. Yeah, we had uh, Zach Parag, former CBU player, as a, an intern in our office this year, Danny. with uh, he, He's from uh, the Denver area, and so he helped us out in the office a little bit. And Rachel did a, an interview with him as well. And I know they were disappointed that they didn't get to finish out the season. Obviously, they didn't have the conference tournament to go to last year, but it looked like uh, there might be some other postseason opportunities for the Lancers. So I got to thank uh, the, that one of the uh, orders of business this year is unfinished business. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that is, that's absolutely true. Zach Krog, speaking of another large human being that will catch up <laughs> on how big he is. Uh, but yeah, I, I would think a lot of programs throughout the, throughout the country are going to use that unfinished business as one of their mottos going forward this year, especially those teams that have gotten players back that weren't able to get into the postseason. Um, but I think for, for us, being able to be a part of the WAC Vegas is, is something that's going to be incredible for our program as we build towards you know, getting into March Madness. Another matchup I'm definitely going to be excited to see is former Pac West rival Dixie State, who is now in the conference going up against the Lancers. Is that already a rivalry, would you say? I would assume it'll jump back into that uh, as, you know, a former opponent that we used to face quite often. Um, I think it'll be great for both fan bases to see each other again and, and be able to add that to the Utah trip. So, uh, yeah, I know we're very excited to, to see Dixie back in, in the conference for the WAC. Danny, we want to thank you for taking some time out to talk men's basketball at CBU. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. All right. Coming up next, we're going to have Daniel Cook uh, to talk women's basketball for the Lancers. You're listening to the WAC Podcast. We would like to thank our sponsors of the WAC Podcast, Hercules Tires and Adidas. Now, back to Eric and Rachel. 
We're now talking California Baptist women's basketball with Daniel Cook, also Assistant Director of Athletic Communications at CBU. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Daniel, first off, actually, I want to congratulate you. You just had a a little girl uh, within the last couple of weeks. So that's got to be pretty exciting, almost as exciting as a, a basketball starting back up. I, I think so. Yeah, it's it's close. I, I think I like <laughs> I think I like my daughter a little bit more. Um, but you know, going so many months without any sports, I'm very much looking forward to the season getting started. Well, looking forward to the season getting started. I, I got to imagine that Coach Olson is super excited to have uh, uh, Brittany Thomas back. Uh, I believe she was a preseason WAC Player of the Year, and then went down uh, before the season even started. Uh, hopefully she's back healthy. Can, can you give us an update on Brittany? Yeah. Um, you know, Brittany, Brittany's timeline was, was sort of up in the air all year last year. They, they you know, keep keeping an optimistic outlook and, but not trying to rush anything. And obviously she wasn't able to make it back last year. Um, so this year, you know, they're very excited. Um, you know, we'll have her back. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's so noticeable when, when you miss that big rebounding presence down low. Um, you know, she's just so good at, at finding the ball and getting to it. Um, I mean, she's tall, but, you know, she's not typically the, the tallest one in the conference, but she, she still manages to grab so many boards. Um, so it'll be really great having her back. And she brings a lot of energy to the team, too. So, um, you know, she's, she's definitely not shy, and, and she gets her, her teammates up and, and, and excited for any of the games. So, uh, you know, off the court, too, it'll be great to have her around and, and, and back, in the, back in the huddle. How beneficial will it be to have that voice back in the huddle with the team? It'll, it'll be really beneficial, um, you know, especially, you know, still, still in that NCAA transition period, um, so having having a, a senior leader um, to her caliber um, on on the sidelines and, and in the huddles and and you know at, at the free throw line you know when we're about to, to shoot free throws just to calm someone down or anything like that um, it's big it's really big um, so even during practices she's 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 being more vocal um, you know she was always at practice last year but not being able to participate it's hard to you know, really make that much of an impact. But now she's back on the floor and, and leading the way. Well, another player that uh, looks to be back this year is Caitlin Harper. She was averaging over 16 points a game when she was injured early in the season. Is Caitlin uh, looking to be back in the lineup this year? That's that's the that's the trajectory she's on. Yeah, um, you know, she went down with a with a weird knee injury that happened. You know, in a practice, non-contact, just one of those weird injuries that that happens sometimes. And um, you know, she took the year, and and she's she's been working out. She she looks great. She's strong. Um, she's not shy about it. So so that's you know, getting over that mental hurdle is is usually kind of the biggest thing for for an injury like that. Um, but yeah, being able to, to pair up Brittany and Caitlin or, or even just being able to kind of switch them off back and forth and, you know, they can take their breathers and, you know, they're both kind of working themselves back from injuries. Um, so not having to expect too much from it, either one of them um, is super beneficial and, and, you know, is really going to help both of them, um, you know, get, get, to the, get to the level where we know they can be. Is the team able to practice at all, or are they still holding off right now? So uh, we just got the green light. Um, I think it was last week. Uh, we're able to, to be practicing and, and stuff like that. Uh, they were doing outdoor workouts for a long time and outdoor drills. And we've got some sand volleyball courts here on campus. So they were working in the sand and, you know, did a little bit of resistance and things like that. Um, and obviously the, the Riverside heat, you know, adds another little element to the workout. So, uh, but yeah, they're back inside, um, you know, able to, to do their, their practices and their drills and everything like that. So it's been what is the weather like in Riverside right now? Um, we, we had a, a nice little break, um, this weekend. It got down to, I think it was 73. It felt amazing. Um, and it's supposed to be back up to 95 today. Um, so back into the, the mid high nineties, uh, for probably a few more weeks. Um, and then, and then it'll break. So, but it's not 112 anymore, so we're not complaining. 
We're talking with Daniel Cook about CBU women's basketball. And uh, not only do you have the two uh, players back who were injured last year, you also have some other returning players. You have Georgia Dale, Annie Oleta. Uh, I would imagine Jared Olson has to feel pretty good about his team uh, that won uh, 16 games last year heading into uh, this upcoming season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, obviously looking at the roster, there's seven returners and, and three of them are seniors and um, the other four, are, you know, uh, either academically or because of redshirt, you know, underclassmen. So it's nice to have uh, uh, so much experience with the seniors, but still some experience with returning, um, but still knowing, you know, they, they've got some some years to continue to grow. Um, but yeah, on a, you know, she she was working out all year. There were there were some some social media posts of her working out in Spain and doing these crazy mountain hikes and um, you know, doing things like that. Um, she came back just the the fittest she could possibly be. And, and Georgia was you know down in Australia doing the same thing. Um, and you know everybody's back and we're ready to go. Um, I know Anne uh, in particular is really kind of chomping at the bit. Um, you know, I mentioned Brittany Thomas as a leader. Ane is, is probably the most vocal um, for her team and herself. Um, you know, she holds herself to a really high level and, and, you know, tries to do everything she can to get her teammates, uh, you know, to their uh, best possible, um, you know, skills as well. So. Are there any newcomers to the team that fans should get excited about? Oh, well, so... You know, we've got those seven returners. We've got eight new faces. Um, you know, Eliana Brovington is, is one. She actually joined the team back in January, uh, but she redshirted for that half of the season. Um, but she's been practicing. She knows the playbook. Uh, she's, you know, 6'3 center out of Australia. Um, so a little more size still, too. Um, but, you know, she, she runs the floor well. She rebounds. She blocks. She, she shoots, you know, the little mid – mid-range jumpers so uh, you know, she can do a little bit of everything and, and like I said she's, she's got a few months experience with the, with the plays uh, so she's not coming in you know totally green um, and then you know we've got a couple couple uh, transfers you know Easter Washington Portland State uh, Concordia so they've all got experience in the college game um, but they're you know they're, they're new to us but they're not new to college basketball. So it'll be really great to, to have, you know, some, some new perspective from, from those players. Um, and the freshmen are just, they, they don't stop. So there's, they'll definitely keep our, uh, our upperclassmen, uh, you know, they'll, they'll keep their fire to their feet to the fire for sure. Daniel, we talked to Danny Cross in our previous segment about CBU being allowed to play in the WAC tournament this year. I know, a lot of folks uh, in Riverside are excited about that prospect. And I got to imagine the women's basketball team with the returning players, with those players back from injury, I got to imagine Coach Jared Olson uh, has to be pretty excited, not only about going to WAC Vegas, but about uh, potentially uh, advancing pretty far, potentially winning it. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the, you know, talking with Jared, that's that's the thing with, with a tournament like that is, you know, there's seeding, but really, whoever whoever's playing really well at that time. So you know, whether we're a top seed or a bottom seed, you know, there there's no reason to to believe that you know we wouldn't be able to, or or anybody in the conference would be able to make a make a run. Um, but you know, just the the fact that we're now able to 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 attempt that run um, and and compete in the tournament, um, I know it, it's given our team. Um, you know, a, a little extra oomph in the in the you know weight room and on the practice courts and everything like that because you know for our seniors they never you know it wasn't really a, something in their mind that they would get to do so now that it's an option for them um, they are definitely driven and 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 excited about it. Kansas City and CSU Bakersfield have now left the WAC. We welcome in Tarleton and Dixie. However, there will they will not be eligible for the tournament this year. But where do you anticipate CBU at in the standings for this season? Uh, I mean, it's it's a tough question because I mean, obviously, you know, we've we've got you know some some recognizable names returning. You know, a lot of the a lot of schools, you know, they know Brittany, they know Ane, um, they don't know Georgia. They'll remember her quickly. 
Um, but you know, we were we were picked to to finish second last year and ended up, uh, and I think it was seventh. Um, and and Jared is Jared and myself and, and the whole team are, are you know we're optimistic, um, but at the same time we're, we're kind of realistic that um, you know the the goals we have are not set in stone. We still have to earn that. Um, and they, they aren't necessarily expecting to, you know, run away with anything or, or win or, you know, even, you know, be in the top three. They're, they're trying not to set a ton of expectations now. You know, obviously, you know, a lot of returners, there's, there's good, re- good chemistry on the team and we're not, you know, we, we expect to do well. Uh, but I, I don't think any of them would tell you, oh, yeah, we, we expect to win. They, they're, they're going out there. That's their goal. Um, and that's what they're going to work for. Um, but none of them would, would say, oh, yeah, no, we got this. also wanted to point out that it, CBU is in the WAC tournament this year, because, but because CBU is still transitioning from Division II, they would not be eligible for the NCAA tournament if they were to win the, the automatic uh, bid there. That would go to another school within the WAC. But uh, that being said, Daniel, uh, Riverside to Las Vegas, not, a, not too far of a trip, hopefully by then. Uh, knock on wood, hard to say what it's going to be like uh, by March, but uh, uh, maybe if not this year and in future years, uh, fans from Riverside will be able to make that trip over to WAG Vegas and should have a pretty good contingency. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think from, from campus, it's about a four hour drive. So it's, it's very doable. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the fan base is growing, um, you know, the, 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 the event center holds, you know, over 5,000 people, um, and our, our crowds just, our, our attendance just keeps growing. Um, now, obviously, you know, as you stated this year, who knows what that'll <laughs> look like. Maybe eventually, we're not going to hold our breath necessarily right now. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, we, we've we've got a we've got a good even even a student fan base, um, and and that's I think that's pretty key. You know, it's, it'd be tough for you know Seattle, Chicago to road trip to Vegas our students could road trip to Vegas pretty easily. Um, so, you know, aside from, you know, parents and families and, and you know, community fans, uh, you know, it, it'd be nice to, to get those, those loud um, can, uh, CBU crazies out there. Who wouldn't want to spend spring break in Vegas, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of the, the, the general idea about Vegas. And, 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 you know, there's so much to do. So, Yeah. And so why not, why not go out for, for some games? Exactly. Well, we appreciate you hopping on the WAC podcast with us and talking CBU women's hoops. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right. That is Daniel Cook. I also want to thank Danny Cross for joining us on today's podcast. Make sure to listen to Friday's podcast when we have the last of our WAC basketball previews with Tarleton. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening to the WAC Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out our website at WACsports.com.